Thank you very much for tuning in. I do not replace scripture study. Everyone should be reading on their own, pondering his truths, and gaining a testimony for themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit. However, I would like to be a witness for the Savior that he lives, he will return, and we should all be preparing for that glorious day. And without further delay, let's go ahead and continue our studies. And as usual, I will read and expound as we go along. Mosiah chapter 12. Abinadi is imprisoned for prophesying the destruction of the people and the death of King Noah. The false priests quote the scriptures and pretend to keep the law of Moses. Abinadi begins to teach them the Ten Commandments. Verse 1, And it came to pass that after the space of two years that Abinadi came among them in disguise, that they knew him not, and began to prophesy among them, saying, Thus has the Lord commanded me, saying, Abinadi, go and prophesy unto this, pe unto this my people, for they have hardened their hearts against my words. They have repented not of their evil doings. Therefore I will visit them in mine anger, yea, in my fierce anger will I visit them in their inequities and abominations. Verse 2, verse two Yea, woe be unto this generation. And the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thy hand and prophesy, saying, Thus said the Lord, It shall come to pass that this generation, because of their iniquities, shall be brought into bondage, and shall be smitten on the cheek, yea, and shall be driven by men, and shall be slain, and the vultures of the air, and the dogs, yea, and the wild beasts shall devour their flesh. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass that the life of King Noah shall be valued even as a garment in a hot furnace, for he shall know that I am the Lord. These are some very powerful, you could say, prophecies that are, are taking place that Abinadi is doing on behalf of God. In particular, verse 2, where it's going over about vultures and dogs. So God is making it clear that there's a punishment to pay for wickedness. But in verse 3, it relates to... um in the Bible, Leviticus chapter 13, verse 52, where they're explaining about um, those that have leprosy, and if it's on the clothes, they burn the clothes. So that's something I take from verse 3 as well. So this would be a good scripture to tie into the Bible, but we'll go ahead and continue on. Verse 4, and it came to pass that I will smite this my people with sore afflictions, yea, with famine and with pestilence. And I will cause that they shall howl all the day long. Verse 5. Yea, and I will cause that they shall have bur uh, burdens lash upon their backs, and they shall be driven before like a dumb ass. Verse 6. And it shall come to, come to pass that I will send forth hell among them, and it shall smite them, and they shall also be smitten with the east wind, and insects shall pasture their lands land also and devour their grain verse 7 and they shall be smitten with a great pestilence and all this will i do because of their inequities and abominations verse 8 and it shall come to pass that except they repent i will utterly destroy them from off the face of the earth yet they shall leave a record behind them and i will preserve them for other nations which shall possess the land Yea, even this will I do that I may discover the abominations of this people to other nations. And many things did Abinadi prophesy against this people. So let's wrap these uh, verses together. Obviously, God is making it clear that when you do wickedness, destruction is, is going to be upon you. But this is something that nowadays we tend to not recognize that destruction instantly. So it's probably easier for people to feel like they can get away with sin. But the, I guarantee I guarantee this. The one thing that is instant is we lose the spirit to be with us. We may not have destruction that comes upon us immediately when we commit sin, but we will always lose the spirit unless we repent. So that's something I take from that. And also to keep in mind where he's mentioned about in verse eight about the record. So. People that commit sin and we learn from their example, which is something to think about. None of us want our sins to be public knowledge. But as we can see with the scriptures, 
those that have done all these wickedness, even though they did that, it's a learning opportunity for us. So I, I, I take from that a little silver lining that although they're doing wickedness, but it's a teaching moment for us all that if we do wickedness and we do not repent, justice will be upon us. Verse nine, and it came to pass that they were angry with him and they took him and carried him bound before the king and said unto the king, Behold, we have brought a man before thee who has prophesied evil concerning thy people and said that God will destroy them. Verse 10, and he also prophesied evil concerning thy life, said that thy life shall be as a garment in a furnace of fire. Verse 11, and again, he said that thou shalt be a stalk, even as a dry stalk of the field, which is run over by the beasts and trodden under foot. So stock would be one of those words I'll do a Google search to get a picture of, but that's relate, relating to a plant. So it's a part of the plant. But again, a Google search, get you a picture of it. That always helps as well. Verse 12. And again, he said that he said, thou shalt be as the blossoms of a, of a thistle, which when it, it is fully ripe, if the wind bloweth, it is driven forth upon the face of the land. And he pretended the Lord has spoken it. And he said, all this shall come up upon thee, except thou repent. And this because of thine inequities. Verse 13. And now, O king, what great evil hast thou done? Or what great sins have thy people committed that they should be condemned of God or judged of this man? Verse 14. And now, O king, behold, we are guiltless. And, and thou, O king has not sinned. Therefore, this man has lied concerning you, and he has prophesied in vain. These previous verses, unfortunately, show us what is going on nowadays, that people are tripped up to this degree, where they feel like in these verses, they feel like they're doing nothing wrong, where nowadays, again, wrong is right and right is wrong. So everything is so confused. People are so mixed up that they feel like they're living a good life when they're really living in sin. And this is what I take from that, that you, you get to a point where you're so far gone into wickedness that the spirit is no longer there with you. And you're completely at the power of the devil where you don't even know you're sinning. You don't, you don't even believe that you're doing anything wrong. And so that makes it very difficult for people to repent and to return to God. But it's still possible. But that's what I take from that, the, that these people at this time are so far going into wickedness that they don't even recognize that they're doing something wrong. Verse 15, and behold, we are strong. We shall not come into bondage or be taken captive by our enemies. Yea, and thou hast prospered in the land and thou shalt also prosper. Verse 16, behold, here is the man. We deliver him into thy hands. Thou mayest do with him as seem, seemeth thee good. Verse 17. And it came to pass that King Noah caused that Abinadi should be cast into prison. And he commanded that the priests should gather themselves together, that he might hold a council with them what he should do with him. Verse 18. And it came to pass that they said unto the king, Bring him hither, that we may question him. And the king commanded that he should be brought before them. Verse 19. And they began to question him that they might cross him, that thereby they might have wherewith to accuse him. But he answered them boldly and withstood all their questions, yea, to their astonishment, for he did withstand them in all their questions and did confound them in all their words. Verse 20. And it came to pass that one of them said unto him, what mean is the words which are written and which have been taught by our fathers, saying, verse 21, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publish peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that said unto Zion, thy God reigneth. So they're quoting some scriptures that is very good scriptures if they actually meant it so these priests are what god has taught us or the savior said basically where they honor him with the words but their hearts are far from him 
So this is something that, uh, an example I take from these priests. Yeah, yeah, they, they're saying the correct words, but their heart is not into it. They don't really believe the things that they're saying, and they're just doing that to try uh, to, try to trip up uh, the prophet Abinadi. However, the spirit is with them. And this is another example that regardless of all the opposition, regardless of what other people say, we hold steadfast to that iron rod. Hold to the truth. It doesn't matter how many questions people throw your way. Stick to the truth, and God will always be with you. You don't have to worry about that. Verse 22, thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye when the Lord shall bring again Zion. Verse 23, break forth into joy. Sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem. For the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. Verse 24. And the Lord hath made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Verse 25. And now Abinadi said unto them, Are you priests and pretend to teach this people and to understand the spirit of prophesying and yet desire to know of me what these things mean? Verse 26, I say unto you, woe be unto you for perverting the ways of the Lord. For if ye understand these things, ye have, have not taught them. Therefore, you have perverted the ways of the Lord. Verse 27, ye have not applied your hearts to understanding. Therefore, you have not been wise. Therefore, what teach ye these people? Verse 28, and they said, and they said we teach the law of Moses. So as you can see right here, Abinadi is throwing it back at him in a way you could say, but he's following God's promptings and the things he has been taught. So Abinadi, the prophet, has the spirit to be with him. So there's no way he's going to be tripped up by the things they're saying. And then he's also trying to teach them and try to help them, give them an opportunity to repent if they're willing to understand and to listen to the words that the prophet Abinadi is trying to teach them. Verse 28. And they said, oh, excuse me, verse 29. And again, he said unto them, next page over. If ye teach the law of Moses, why do ye not keep it? Why do you set your hearts upon riches? Why do ye commit whoredoms and spend your strength with harlots? Yea, and cause this people to commit sin that the Lord has caused to send me to prophesy against these people. Yea, have a great evil against that, this people. Excuse me, yea, even a great evil against these this people. Verse 30, know ye not that I speak the truth? Yea, ye know that I speak the truth, and ye ought to tremble before God. Verse 31, and it shall come to pass that ye shall be smitten for your inequities, for ye have said that ye teach the law of Moses, and what know ye concerning the law of Moses? Does salvation come by the law of Moses? What say ye? Verse 32. And they said and an they, they answered and said that salvation did come by the law of Moses. Verse 33. But now Benadi said unto them, I know if ye kept the commandments of God, ye shall be saved. Yea, if ye keep the commandments which the Lord delivered unto Moses in the mount in the mount of Sinai, saying, Verse 34, I am the Lord thy God, who hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of out of the house of uh, bondage. Verse 35, thou, thou shalt have no other God before me. Verse 36, thou shalt not make unto thee any engraven, graven image or any likeness of anything in heaven above or things which are in the earth beneath. Verse 37, now Abinadi said unto them, have ye done all this? I say unto you, nay, ye have not. And have ye taught this people that they should do all these things, I say unto you, nay, ye have not. And that concludes the chapter. And to wrap up these previous verses, what a great example the prophet of Benadiah is showing. He is staying bold and steadfast, following the spirit, trying to help them. And it doesn't matter all the pressure that he has. So this is something that I take that we need to hearken that onto ourselves, to listen to it and to follow. Doesn't matter all the peer pressure. Stick to the truth and God will bless us. Again, that concludes the chapter. And I want to wrap up with my testimony that I know the Book of Mormon is true. 
It is the holy word of God, and it goes along with the Bible. Both are scriptures and testify of the Savior, both his life and that the second coming is real. I know that prophets also live, that they teachers, they guide the church. They are directed by God to help all of us to repent and to not fall into traps that this world has set for us. If we listen to the spirit and we hearken onto the words of the prophets, I know that God will bless us and he will, we will fill of his love and we will be guided and directed by his Holy Spirit. I know that the atonement is real and that if we are willing to repent, we can be filled with forgiveness that would fill our souls with so much joy and our burdens would be lighter. I know that God lives, Jesus Christ is the Savior, and I leave my testimony with y'all in his holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.